what do you do if a cease and desist lands in your inbox? Join me as I take you step by step, line by line of an email that landed in my inbox that was because a longtime business friend had it land in their inbox. Okay, short and sweet, trademark infringement means you are being accused of using another business's registered trademark. Now, I am going to walk you through why we have to double check that it is in fact a registered trademark because believe it or not, people like to send scammy emails. Okay, so first and foremost, we want to identify where this trigger, where this business decision is going to have a legal impact. So for those of you that have followed me for any amount of time, you know I like to always bring us back to our North Pole to New York City. Now, if this is brand new to you, you can always follow the link in the description, find the North Pole to New York City video. But Short and sweet, all it means is we are taking people from cold traffic, so this could be a blog, a podcast, any place you are out in the world where you don't have contact information. As soon as someone opts in, they are falling under your lead magnet. So they are a subscriber. You can contact them via a text message or an email. Once they purchase from you, now they are in what I call the intro offer could be any price point. All it means is they're giving you money. So they are a buyer. New York City, which is, we know, big, full of lights, Wall Street, Broadway, all kinds of money is going back and forth when we get to New York City. This is simply the second time that someone is buying from you. So a loyal customer. The goal being, let's get people from the North Pole to New York City as fast as possible. All right, so where does trademark infringement fit on our North Pole to New York City journey? The reality is it can land anywhere. So first, let's make sure we've got this written out. And if you want any of these resources for any of my videos, just follow the code that is on the video and you can get anything that follows with this video. So trademark infringement has to do with branding. Now, this is not a trademark 101 video. You are more than welcome. Follow the link. I will link to past trademark 101 videos. But at its core, it's a brand identifier. It's how I know when I'm driving down the street and I see a big brown truck I know that it's UPS, not Amazon. It's how when you go to the store and you see a line of colas on the shelf, what is a and Root Beer? What is Coca-Cola? What is Pepsi? So trademark infringement exists to alleviate confusion for us as consumers when we are out shopping. All right, I happen to have a LaCroix sitting right here next to me. This is how I know, okay, I like this. I want to buy this when I am shopping. When it comes into play for us as online business owners, we could have a branding that is our legal business name. And you'll see when we go through this letter why this is going to come into play. We can have a legal business name and we can have a brand name. For some of you, they will be one and the same. For others, your legal name, which matters where you're paying taxes, is different than the brand name uh, you use out in the marketplace. So it, when you are in the North Pole, you could have a blog, you could have a podcast. I'll use the big ones right here. You could have a YouTube channel like you're watching right now. Any of these could absolutely be your brand name. Now, if you name your blog, your podcast, or your YouTube channel, something that is the same as or confusingly similar, which is what we're gonna walk through when we get into the, start diving into this cease and desist that the business owner received. If this name is the same, that's a big no-no. Or if it is too similar, then you're committing trademark infringement. Save you the suspense 
if you are in fact committing trademark infringement, you have to rip out and stop using that name, that identifier. So it could be a color, it could be a smell, it could be a sound. We're going to just, for the ease of this video, we're gonna just use the word, word. I'm not going into logos or all the different things that a brand identifier could be. So know that when I say word, it also means colors, smells, sounds, anything that identifies a brand. That's what a trademark is, it's what it does. So at the North Pole, when you're engaging with people, out in the world, your brand is definitely gonna come into play. Now, let's say you also name a lead magnet. You brand a process, you brand a anything. A virtual summit could land here. If you have people opting in, I'll just put virtual summit here, but it could be anything that is going along with your opt-in. You can commit trademark infringement at this stage of the game. When people are buying your course, your program, perhaps a membership, anything here that has a brand identifier with it also will trigger. So trademark infringement is one of those instances that can be triggered any point along the North Pole to New York City journey. So it is really important. You need to pay attention to this. If you can't pay attention to it today, please bookmark it, share it with your friends. This is one topic that I have been screaming from the mountaintops since 2011. And even before that, when I was in my uh, former career as a um, part of the collegiate trademark licensing industry. This is important, okay? You've got to pay attention to it or unfortunately there's some really not fun consequences. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now we've got a little bit of a foundation, a little bit of context of what we're talking about. Now let's dive in line by line to this cease and desist letter. Okay, so here is the cease and desist letter that a business friend of mine received in their inbox. I have colored their email in blue. I've taken out all of the identifying details, so this can be applicable to all of us. And as we're going through, again, if you want any of these resources from this video, click on the code that is now I'm sure over my face. Um, all you have to do is follow the QR code and you can get a copy of this letter, you can get the whiteboard, anything else that I happen to show you that goes along with this video. So here we go. Hey, Tamsin, I did not fall off the face of the earth. Well, just sort of. I have been focusing on a lifestyle. Isn't that the case for all of us, especially post pandemic? Life gets busy, a lot is going on. But I have been following my heart and doing all of their business stuff. And after a year of building their following, I am finally successful and loving every minute of it. That's awesome. I do have goals of some more sustainable online work and have lots of ideas, of course, don't we all? But I haven't had a moment to breathe trying to make this sustainable. Anyone else identify? <laughs> you can raise your hand in the privacy of your living room. But I am clearly made for this. Awesome. Always makes my heart sing. And feel like I can breathe and I'm in the place I am meant to be. Who doesn't want to be there? So, of course, I got this email this week. Here is the information. Now, this part that is in black is what was received from the other business owner, okay? So this was just, I believe, a contact form filled out on the business owner that I know, their website. Message, good day. <laughs> uh, not, about to not be a good day. Um, we are writing to you because we were alerted to your use of the two words, word one and word two. Now, this is where I have changed 
all of the identifying information because this is applicable to you. You can put in your brand identifier. If you have a single word, two words, three words, four words, whatever it is, that is how I'm going to make this applicable directly to you. So they have the registered trademark for word one and word two in reference to a program or business you are associated with. The words word one, word two is a trademarked term in the United States and can only be used in a site licensed by the other business owner. So I have replaced that business's name with just the term other business owner because anyone could send this to you. Now, I've also put in comments so that I know you didn't go to law school. You haven't been doing this for 20 years like I have been. So this is so that you can really just pay attention and kind of absorb what I'm saying versus trying to take crazy amounts of notes. So first and foremost, always, always, always double check that the person who has just sent you this, that they do in fact have the registered trademark for what they are telling you you can no longer use. Believe it or not, people send false information via the mail, via email, via text messages. So always make sure that you are double checking this. Now, I am not doing a how to search the trademark database video right now. Um, if there is one, I will link it around this video. But where you want to go to double check this is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Now, I can already hear those of you saying, but okay, wait, 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 I'm in the UK, I'm in Canada, I'm in Australia. Yes, you are. You will always have a trademark database based on the marketplace. So Australia has a different marketplace than the US for physical goods. Obviously in the digital world, we have a global marketplace. And most of you, if you're watching this video, you are selling your brand in the United States. It's one of the strongest, if not the strongest, trademark databases for registration. So it's why I use it. I am a U.S. attorney, so it's what I'm familiar with. But you also want to make sure that you are checking other um, marketplace areas. We use different words for it in the law. I'm trying to make sure this is easy for you to understand, save you going to law school. So you would look in the UK, you could look in Australia, you could look in Canada. Those are the larger databases. So you always want to double check here. You can come in. Yes, there are resources. Um, I have resources too, which I will give you the links to all of that. If you ever want help with this, Bizzlebox is here to take care of that for you. So if we've checked, yes, they do in fact own it. If they don't include, what they should have done is included a link directly to their registration, all of the information. But while you're there and you found it, go ahead and take a screenshot, print it off, write it down so that you have it in your notes. So that is important. Now, once we've taken care of that, we're going to keep moving through this letter. Please look at our website, otherbusinessowner.com, to clarify who we are and what we do. Now, this is important because more than one business can own a trademark for a word. Here in the States, we have Dove Chocolate and Dove Shampoo. They're both registered trademarks. They're both perfectly legit. But if I'm shopping for shampoo and I see Dove Chocolate, the chances of me being confused, slim to none. There was a really um, fun case to follow years ago, and it was Bulgari Perfume Cosmetics versus Bulgari Dog Food. Ultimately, the court said, look, if you're shopping for Bulgari Perfume, it's not likely going to be confused with Bulgari dog food, if both names could exist. So if you are in the being the recipient of a letter like this, it does matter. What are you doing versus what is the company doing? So that is really important. Again, if they don't include that information, write it down. Take some screenshots, start a file, pretend like you are 
you know, NCIS or Sherlock Holmes kind of gathering your information. Um, it's also, this can be a really <gasps> kind of a moment that you're having all these emotions. So I find that kind of methodically going through things helps calm that nervous system down. Okay. At law, thankfully, moves really, really slow. So we have some time to just calm down, which is a good thing. We do or are a sharing about their other business owner site. Now, here, sometimes they like to give you all kinds of emotional details, like they're completely irrelevant. So just block it out. Okay, what matters is what is their business doing? Where is that brand identifier landing? Is it on chocolate in shampoo or is it on shampoo in conditioner? That is going to be a no go. But chocolate and shampoo, perfume and dog food, we're, we got, it's a completely different game, playing a completely different game. Next part the use of the words. Word one and word two is a service mark infringement as described in U.S. law. And then they give you the address. So that's all this is right here. This is an address of where to find this law. So this portion of the law. So they've included it. You can go to it. If you're like most people, you're going to land on this and you're going to just glaze over. Just completely. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't need to. You can, you know, just, they gave it to you. That's nice. But this is where you are finding information. Now, Cornell Law School is known for their site. They link to all kinds of information. So even though this isn't the USPTO site that they provided, um, this is a reputable site. It is often cited because it has the laws and their information. So this is not alarming in the slightest to me. So they gave the information. You always want to check and see where it's going. Um, now, here, we would be glad to work with you if you are interested in opening a licensed Word 1 and Word 2 business. Now, in this instance, this company has adopted a licensing model. Now, again, if you've known me for any amount of time, you know I love talking about licensing. I think licensing is incredible, but you may not want to be part of what their license is. And it's a very big topic, okay? So again, I hate to always like, hey, this is not a video about that, but we could be here for hours. So I have to kind of do that but licensing means I'm giving you permission to use this name. It's not a franchise. It's not a certification. It's its own per, it's, its own little legal personality, but it's basically a permission slip. So in here, they're saying, hey, if you still want to do this, um, because as you'll see when we move through this, this is a situation of shampoo and conditioner. These two, what these two businesses do is on the same aisle of the supermarket. It's on the same shelf. It's in the same area. It's very, very, very similar. We'll get to that in just a second. So they're saying, hey, we have this model. Now, you may or may not want to be part of that, but know that if you see that, it's not a license that, hey, you get our license, you can use this name and keep doing what you were doing. No, 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 no. You can get our permission to come under our umbrella in some way, shape, or form. can look in very different ways, but it's not just pay us some money and use the name how you want to use it. It is not that kind of a deal at all. Um, so always be have your ears perked up if you were reading language like that. Please understand that the use of the words word one and word two requires permission and licensing from our organization. Now, this is if you want to pursue licensing with them, if you want to become part of the umbrella that they are doing, people will have licensing all the way from white label products, which are, hey, I'm giving you permission to use my work, but you can put your own logos on it, your own spin on it. Nobody even knows that under the hood, you're licensing it from someone else. It completely looks and acts and talks like your business. 
over to the other side, which has a very firm grip on the permissions and what you can and can't do with colors and logos and wording and images and all that kind of stuff. So that is where this came in, in terms of an intersection point of trademarking, which is the branding, and licensing, which is a business model. Sincerely, other business owner. So by now you're panicking, you're freaking out. Oh my goodness. Um, what often happens to me, then people will obviously give me um, all their information. Okay. So I know this organization. Details are honestly completely irrelevant at this point. Whether you know them or not does not matter from a legal standpoint. So let that part just kind of you know, pretend like they're a total stranger. Because when it comes to legal, um, especially in a situation where we haven't been proactive, um, not everyone is in the friendly category any longer. So here we go. And this is the part that I think it's really important that this is life. The law lives within our lives. The law makes life, honestly, incredibly great. Okay, so we've done the legal part. Now let's kind of let me walk you through blending these two pieces together. So I feel a lot of things about this. You should. It's your business. It's your brand. You have put blood, sweat, tears, hours behind the laptop into this. You're going to feel a lot. Now is when you really, really, really want to have an objective eye so in this instance, I have known this person probably eight years at this point. I believe I met them before my youngest was born. So they have been in my programs. They have been customers before. Um, having an attorney you know, like, and trust in your world so that when the feeling stuff happens and it's going to you have an objective ear to talk to. Someone that can step back and say, okay, I totally get it. This is not fun. This is not what you had planned for your day, but let's work through it, okay? We've got to deal with it, so let's work through it methodically. Go back to the letter. First of all, my business name is Word 3 plus Word 1 and Word 2. That only matters if that word three changes a shampoo and conditioner scenario to a shampoo and chocolate scenario, or if that third word transforms the perfume into dog food, magically speaking, that then it matters. But if that word three takes us from dark chocolate to milk chocolate, or shampoo to conditioner, word three doesn't matter, okay? That's, the, again, multiple pieces kind of blending this whole thing together. Um, that's why it matters. Now, I registered in, you know, the past, and the state, she's, this person is in the States, did a license search and granted that name. This is where, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the legal name that you pay taxes under, really that's the only importance for a legal name, is completely different than the brand name. If I were to go look up LaCroix, I'm trying to see if I have any other trademark things around me, um, Apple would be one, I have an iPad sitting here, I have AirPods sitting here. If I look up the brand name, it may or may not be the legal name. So. Registering in your state, yes, you have to do that to pay taxes. The state giving you that legal name is irrelevant when it comes to branding. Completely irrelevant. So that is why it's really important before you set up the YouTube channel, before you do the podcast, if we come back to North Pole, to New York City, this part right back here at the beginning, oh, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to get an Instagram. I'm going to get, um, that would be another piece I should add in here. All social media would fall under here. Um, 
your Facebook page, your TikTok, your uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is usually our names, um, your Instagram, any of those things, they matter. Doing a, a search for your state and getting the, yep, you can have that name, they're not checking for trademark. They're completely separate. They are worlds apart. They do not matter. So if you, domain is the other piece. People say, oh, I have the domain name. Big deal, so what, who cares, okay? I say that in the nicest way possible, but big deal, so what, who cares? They are different areas of the law. This is completely irrelevant at this point. So next piece also comes up frequently. I didn't, don't think you can trademark names so commonly used in this industry. Now, it is likely, and I've had to do this on applications that I've filed myself, if you send, you can't register a generic word. You can't register basic words that it'd be like, yep, you named your child John and now nobody else can name their child John. You'd be like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Same concept applies to trademark law. So you cannot do generic names. You can't get the trademark for them. But when you send it in and you're like, okay, I am word one and word two, the examining attorney at the USPTO will send back your application and say, you need to disclaim this interest. So when you disclaim it, you're just simply saying, I am not taking any interest in this word one or this word two. It's putting them together that gave this registered trademark owner their registered trademark. So word one cannot be trademarked, as is often the case. It's a generic term. It's a common term. There are businesses with the name word three and word one, two. Yep, you're going to have that um, for sure. Again, kind of irrelevant. That's just the way trademark works. That's just how it works. Some stuff matters. Some stuff, eh, you kind of wish it mattered, but it doesn't. So I do not want or need a license from this organization to do the work I do. And that would be extremely limiting to the work and the customers that I do work with. I'm not using anything of theirs and they have no proprietary information or value. This is often the case when you get a cease and desist. Again, it does not matter. They are talking about the branding aspect. They have the legal rights to that brand. If it is shampoo and chocolate, we have a case. But if it is shampoo and conditioner on the same aisle with, I mean, yes, they're technically different, but if I'm shopping for shampoo, I would be confused if I saw conditioner with the same name that wasn't the same. Imagine I'm shopping and I see, oh, there's Dove shampoo. Oh, there's Dove conditioner. They must be the same thing. And they're not. This is A and this is B. That you That's trademark infringement because it is con likelihood to be confusing, confusingly similar, whatever words you want to put on it. It's confusion in the marketplace. Dove shampoo, Dove chocolate. Yeah, you're not, they're not on the same aisle. If I look for one and I, someone even set the Dove chocolate next to the Dove shampoo, I'm not going to think they're the same thing. The chances are slim to none. So in this instance, there is a licensing model that is available, but this person is not interested in that. So this is often the case, okay? This is very, very, very common um, for that to come up where you're like, hey, I'm not, I don't want to use their stuff. I don't, I'm not using it. They don't have anything good. They have the brand. They have the trademark. Trademarks are valuable because they are the brand identifiers. I did recently consider changing the name of my business as I felt it was a bit confusing, word two, and I wanted it to say more. I thought of word three plus word one plus word four, or possibly a word five, as I do a lot of collaborating with other professionals. But I didn't do it at the time, even though I made up some logos. 
Now I think it would probably just be easier to change, but this is awesome, okay? I know when you get these letters, they are scary, they are deflating, they just bring up all kinds of emotions, perfectly expected, perfectly normal. It's also a fantastic time, I'm a big silver lining person, that, oh, okay, this is not what I wanted, but you know what? I have the lemons, I'm gonna go find some sugar, and we are going to put this into a delicious concoction, all right? So this is a great place to be in, even though it doesn't seem like it at the time, it might be expensive to fix it. It might be labor intensive. That could absolutely be true. But I have been a part of many rebrands. I have been on the um, counseling side of these letters for well over a decade now. There is a silver lining. We can find a container that will be like, oh, this is so much better. I learned so much from this. Okay. So. That, to me, it's not lollipops and rainbows, yay, at the moment, but it gives you the potential to correct the misstep, make it stronger and better in the future. Uh, Here it is. That requires a lot of work to do. Website, redirection, business cards, Google search, all the PDFs, all the videos, all the podcasts, all the Canva images, all the money you spent. Yes, if you commit trademark infringement, you have to rip it all out. If you made a virtual summit, you get to rip it all out. If you did an entire course, you get to rip it all out. Now, depending on the significance, they will give you an amount of time. However, We live in a digital world. You can unpublish that sales page in less than an hour. You can redirect that website in under an hour. You can stop selling that course in under an hour. When it's already been purchased, you can say, look, I already have all these people that own this. It's in their digital libraries. It's part of their membership, whatever the case may be. That's fine, but you can no longer sell it. And the confusion is now behind your paywall. It's not out on the shelves of the marketplace. So sometimes they will give you an amount of time to correct the forward-facing marketplace areas. However, given that it is largely digital, unpublishing takes no more than an hour. You can have that stuff cleaned up. Does it mean you could be invisible for an amount of time? Yes, it does mean that you could be invisible for an amount of time. But again, if you ever want help with any of this, this is what I do. This is Bizzlebox. Business and legal in a box for out-of-the-box entrepreneurs. It is your business decisions, legal impact, and I walk you through like this all the time. Preferably before these letters happen. I like making sure that my people don't, are are not on the receiving end. Let's get in front of this before it happens, okay? So much better. So, 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 so much better. But we can always fix it, okay? It can be fixed. And the biggest issue for me is that I take insurance for my services and it took a year to get in network with insurance and it is tied to my business name. I don't know what is involved in changing the business name. Here, this could be a huge silver lining because likely if you're taking insurance, it's under the legal name, all right? Remember that difference between legal name and brand name? Taking insurance, and this comes up in a variety of different professions, your insurance provider is likely not giving you insurance strictly under your brand name. It could be your legal name, DBA, the brand name. In that instance, all you are doing is calling and saying, please remove the DBA. That legal entity is still the anchor to your contracts, your taxes, your insurance. All right. That So that can be a huge silver lining in this instance. Any advice for me? 
Well, this video <laughs> is my advice, but the short answer is explore your options. If your name takes you from shampoo or sorry, shampoo and conditioner, you're likely committing trademark infringement. You are going to have to stop. It's not fun, but that will that is the legal reality. If you're in shampoo and chocolate, then talk to an attorney you know, like, and trust because you can advocate for why, hey, I am selling chocolate. Or the dog food company, when Bulgari came after them with the perfume, okay, so you, let me get this straight. You're saying that if someone is shopping for your cosmetics and they see my dog food, they're going to be confused? I, I would have loved to have been in the many conference rooms that I'm sure were involved in that case because if I'm on the Bulgari side, I'm like, yes, they're totally confusing. Really? So you're saying that your perfume is confusing to dog food? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. In this instance, we are dealing this letter, this what uh, underneath the hood, uh, it is a shampoo conditioner scenario. So this is trademark infringement. This you would have to find a new name. So don't do this alone, okay? Yes, you can. Google is out there. But having been engulfed in trademarks and trademark licensing since 2002, there's no need to go this alone. There is no need at all. So Fizzlebox is always here. Um, it is designed just for these instances. It's designed to prevent these instances. So I hope that this gives you an idea of pulling these, pulling this letter apart line by line. Um, but please, any questions, any thoughts, anything at all, um, feel free, leave it in the comments below. I always love seeing where you guys are at when I am talking about topics like this. See ya on the next video.